I started off with no money down. Like I didn't know anything about real estate. I just read books about it. And I'll never forget, I read this book by Robert Allen, No Money Down. And I learned all these different secrets. Finally, in 1999, uh, I was about, I was working for this construction company and I bought my first two family and, and, and I did it with owner finance and I was working three jobs. Uh, I worked night and day and then I saved up enough money and I put $2,000 down on this two family. And then I didn't know how to paint. I didn't know anything about carpet. And then right after that, what, uh, within 90 days, it changed my whole life. I went from making 26,000 paying $700 a month, you know, five, $600 a month, which I barely had any money left at the end of the month. Matter of fact, I had more month than money. All right. And then, uh, but finally, when I did this two family, I had more money than the end of the month. And that began to change my life. Mm -hmm. And then by then I got my credit fixed and then I got two, four families. And then that paid my car note. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So I went from free rent to car note, like my real estate was paying my bills. And uh, what happened after then, um, you know, like until the 2000, what's going, what, what's happening? You know, so I was doing things pretty good, but then there's this thing called over leveraging, right? That's when you put too much debt and I was drowning. And what happened, during that period of time, I still don't really know what happened, but I, I got laid off or fired one or the other. I don't, I don't, I don't know, right? But anyway, I, lo I left, left my job. So now I was really dependent on these to pay my bills and everything. And that it, it wasn't enough because then I got two full service car washes. But literally I started having a car wash and I was over leveraged on these properties. I was drowning in debt and then everything just fell apart. I couldn't pay the bills and literally I became homeless. I got evicted out of my own home and then my mom and dad finally let me come back home. But not at to the point they painted the room pink and lavender. I was like, what happened? They changed, they changed how my room looks. But I guess they weren't expecting me to come back home at the age of 30. Uh, so I did that and I started over. Like mm -hmm. all I did was read books over and over and over again, you know, about uh, power and real estate and making money and insurance and healing. And I noticed that they all had the same thing. Uh, it was just the one golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated uh, and, and make a commitment and take daily action. What trends or changes do you foresee in real estate market in the coming years? And, and how might they impact investors? What do you think, especially in 2024 and 2025? You know, definitely prices is going to steady go up. So like you waiting, oh, I'm waiting for the perfect time. There is no perfect time. There's mm -hmm. not a perfect time to start a family, ain't a perfect time to have a kid. It ain't a perfect time to buy a house. But but I'm telling you, it's a better, the perfect time was yesterday. I can't tell you that. And so um, I do see uh, values increasing and rates are going to come down. Inflation is already coming down. It just hit 3.2. Uh, we project that we're going to be at 2.4 sometime in January, February. Um, the, 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 the feds already signaled that they're bringing the rates down. They're mm -hmm. going to give us two cuts, even though I don't believe it's going to be a, a big, uh, a, a whole basis point. It'll at least be a half base point, which will start re-kicking the economy off. So understand guys, um, in order to slow the economy down, right? they push the rates up mm -hmm. in order to kickstart the, uh, the economy back up. They decrease the rates. As soon as you do a small drop, guess what? They're going to start spending. And guess what? Price is going to go back up. Now there's some areas that's going to get hit harder than others, but for the most part, I mean, houses are maintaining their values. Now, some people timing because of the interest rate and they needed to get out. Yeah, they, they gave up more concessions than they typically would, I, mm -hmm. right? But I don't think they took a major loss because they had so much value in the house. It's a learning curve. So, you know, 
I would stay in one field and really, really understand it. Because a lot of people talk about diversify, diversify. I diversify if it's related to what I'm doing. Mm. Right? For example, I own an apartment building, right? And, and so I have to do renovations. So I end up having enough people that didn't always have work. So we started a, a mold remediation company and that guy ran it and it had a lot of construction. Well, that mm -hmm. rolled over into what we were doing. But I don't suggest, you know, you, you focus on this and then you jump into something completely different. Mm -hmm. You know, if they do something, really just focus on one thing, learn that really well and succeed, you know, and get bored with the success. OK, don't worry. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, oh, I did this. I already made money. So what? Get poor, get bored getting paid. That is awesome. Mike, thank you again for your time. We really appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Peace.